friends, family, we got another one. Let's see what this is. Could be nice, could be total garbage. No idea. I don't even know where, oh, well, that's where it came from. Okay. A Cuerno. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Ooh. Nice. All right. Let's see if I can find a video. All right. So, unfortunately, I could not find a video. Um, but I'm just going to get right into it. Uh, so Aquanero, uh, it's it's a decent um, it's a decent diver. I, I'm I'm actually kind of pleased with it. Now it's it's not overly exciting. Um, you know, you look at it and it's like, okay, well, what differentiates this from all the other divers? So I'll kind of get into that. Um, it does have a a one month warranty. Uh, sorry, a one year warranty. So not horrible, right? It's kind of like all the others, uh, one to two years. Um, and this is no exception. That's good. I mean, it's <laughs> You'll know if you have problems before then um, The watch is nice. It is definitely good quality and I'll just go over some of the some of the basic features before I really get into some of it um, Some of the things that I always like to mention right a lot of people ask <clears throat> Well, how do you know it's good quality? What makes a good quality, right? So 316 stainless steel Nothing as interesting as you know, you see how these are all drilled out. Well, these were also drilled out Right, every single one of these at one point had been drilled out, and then they're spot welded and polished to make it look uh, unique. Now, I would assume that Aquanero probably doesn't make their own bracelets. They probably buy them, and this is a standard size. Right, uh, and we'll go into the measurements. But um, either either way, they're still spending a decent amount of money to get a quality bracelet. And this is sort of a grain of rice Milanese, uh, you know, center here and solid end links, which I really like. And you know, one of the things I'll say too is I'm a big Wenger fan, I really am. But you know, most of the watches that you buy from Wenger now, they have stamped and rolled links, which I just don't like, right? And so, you know, you look at a watch like this, which is, I, I would assume is probably made in China. I mean, I'm not even gonna deny that it's probably not. I don't see anywhere that it says it, but you can pretty much assume it's probably made in China. But by and large, the quality of the case and some of these things are better than what you would get with a, uh, a Wenger, right? A lot of these Swiss companies, some of the more entry level and inexpensive ones, they pretty much just assume that because they're putting Swiss on it, then you're gonna say, oh, it's high quality, right? Just, and, and it is, right? You know, the movements are good quality, but why are the Wengers stamped and rolled, right? Why? Why can't they come with solid links? So, um, this obviously stamped, um, this is probably 316 stainless as well, and that's okay. It has a, uh, laser etched, or that might actually, yeah, this is actually laser etched back, case back. Um, I think stylistically what puts this watch, um, different than other normal watches is that it has sort of an interesting, interesting look. It looks pretty basic, right? So just on the face of it, it kind of looks relatively uninteresting. And I'm tempted to almost kind of get rid of it just because I have so many dive watches. Um, I'm probably gonna have to ask Watch Game to start giving me some, some, uh, you know, fashion watches, I guess. But this is actually a very nice watch. Um, the loom is quite good. I'll put a picture right there so you can see it. The loom is certainly something, this is absolutely something that you would uh, be willing to wear. Uh, diving, right? So I'm wearing another another watch, a Spinnaker. Um, equally nice. Uh, I love the Spinnaker. This is also a, what is this? This is also 200 meter. This one is 200 meter as well. So they're kind of the same and I'll put the chart up there. Uh, 200 meter watch. You can absolutely go snorkeling, uh, even some diving. I'm mean, 200 meters is long. That is twice the length of a high school football field. And that will get you pretty much anywhere you want to be, anything that you're going to do. If you're snorkeling, you're probably not going more than 20 meters down, and that's still that's still a good distance, right? You're not going to be down there for that long. So, um, stylistically though, I do like the crystal. 
The crystal stands proud. And then you look at this one that I'm wearing, which is like what most of them are, and it's flush. And I understand that most people would want that. Why do you care? But if you're gonna wear this for more than just diving, that kind of adds a neat flair to it. It gives it sort of a sense of, of look. Now, I don't know how that will disrupt if you're actually wearing it in the water, but I think it's kind of cool. I actually really appreciate, uh, it gives it more of a style of how like the old dive watches were. And you can see this one here. This one is an old uh, Waldman. It's a 17 jewel mechanical. And it actually has an acrylic crystal, right? This is probably not even three ATM, even though these are the skin divers, right? You could wear them just swimming. This has sort of a similar look. Now, of course, this is a quartz watch, and I'll put pictures of the movement there. You can see it uses the Swiss parts version of the Ronda 515. So, you know, it's not the most amazing movement in the world, but it is certainly a good quality. It just doesn't come with it the accuracy that a Ronda assembled um, Swiss made version of the movement is so it only has one jewel uh accuracy is within what do they say 20 seconds uh, per month something like that it can lose up to 20 seconds per month which if you're diving 20 seconds per month is really not a concern right you don't really care about a cosec type watch uh i don't even know why that would even matter to you unless you're doing something like encryption or missile guidance right <laughs> the watch you just don't care um, so also it does have a rotating bezel. Uh, I don't feel like counting the clicks right now, but I will, and I'll put it at the bottom. It has very nice action. Very pleased with this. Um, now I am not a diver. I do snorkel, but I'm not a certified diver, so I don't really know how useful that is to you or if anybody even really does uses these bezels, but it is a cool thing. The face, if you can kind of see it, is textured. Now, I think that's actually really cool. It's not something that is necessarily pronounced to others when you're wearing it, but it is it is a textured face, and I really get a kick out of that. At least for me, if I'm wearing it and I'm super bored in a meeting, I can just kind of look down my watch and I get a little bit of kick out of it. Although, since I'm older, I have to actually take my glasses off now and, and look at it. But it's quite nice. The crystal is uh, sapphire coated. Now, this is identical to how Wenger does it, right? It is a hardened mineral crystal, and then they just give it sapphire coating, three layers. So they basically melt, superheat sapphire, and they just drop drop the, uh, the sapphire coating on top of it and superheat it. What that means is that it is scratch resistant, but it is not impact resistant. So if I was to drop this, say, uh, four or five feet off the ground and it landed on concrete, it would probably crack the crystal but it would be unscratched. <laughs> so if I bang this up against my car door, God forbid I'm more concerned about scratching my car or something like that, you know, it, it would not be scratched. But it is a fantastic watch uh, and I'm very happy to have gotten it. It is a good quality watch. Um, you know, let's see if there's anything else I can mention about it. It is offered in uh, 10 colors and I'll put those up there on the right. Um, they all kind of are exactly the same. It just differs on uh, the face color and sometimes the hands as well. So this is model HS3. So this is the third in the line. Um, but it's uh, it's quite nice. Uh, I really do like this watch. I don't know if I can keep all these watches. I really have to just kind of take stock and look at all my dive watches because I have about seven dive watches that I haven't actually worn that are still in the case. And some I'm just going to have to get rid of. And, and so, but um, very nice watch. I do like it. Okay, let's go ahead and do some of the measurements because I'm talking this thing to death. All right. So, 42 and a half. I'm going to say 43. 20 meter lug. And depth, let me see, 13. Okay, 11 and a half. I'm going to say a good solid 11 and a half. And the lug to lug is oops, 46. All right, and let's do the weight. I'm going to guess maybe 120. We'll see. Okay. 
Okay, 140.5. So not bad. Uh, it's got some weight, it's got some presence. I like it. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on so you guys can see what it looks like. I have seven and a half inch wrists. I have not modified this at all. So you can kind of see, uh, this could probably take a eight and a half inch wrist, nine inch, but it looks pretty good. It, it sits well. I like it, it's got a good presence. God, you know, I'm probably gonna have to keep it. Oh, let's see, I didn't check to see if I was screwed on crown. I apologize. It does, screw down crown. So that's another positive right there. So, all right, ladies and gents, that's the Aquanero Hydrosphere. If you like this uh, video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe and please leave any comments you have about this or any other watches in the comments below. Thank you very much.